Oh, yeah, it's going to be a good week. <clears throat> hey, speaking of good week, um, only five days left until we get nine off. You all know that? Anyone, anyone watching the calendar at all? Well, if you count the weekend as well. Yeah, and I'm counting the weekends, right? Yeah. If we can get through Friday, then we won't have to come back till like the Monday after the Monday after that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and then like four weeks until Christmas break, right? And then only just like a few short years after that until you all retire and have grandchildren. My gosh. It's going by fast, right? All right. You're going to be like Grandpa George sitting there reminiscing before you know it. Okay, so we just had Halloween, right? And there's the skeleton, which uh, I guess sometimes is associated with Halloween. Sometimes it's associated with like an anatomy class. This Scottish guy, John Napier, okay, who is Napier than most Scots, um, he's a guy that kind of, one of the guys that, that contributed to the invention or the establishment of logs, he used these things right here to count uh, very large numbers, very small numbers, microscopic numbers. Uh, and these were named after him. These are called Napier's bones. Ooh. Okay. Uh, and they call them bones because they kind of look like uh, carpels, I guess, the carpal bones, the finger bones. Uh, but what they were useful for was to help people count really large numbers by referring to the relative size of those numbers. So kind of like we did in the warm-up with uh, scientific notation. Okay, but logs really uh, advanced past this, and they, they've become now a full-fledged mathematical function and a mathematical operation. So what is a log exactly? Again, log is short for logarithm. As we already said, it's just an exponent. A log is an exponent. But it's not an arbitrary exponent, okay? It's a very specific exponent. So here it is. A log is a unique exponent, particular exponent, to which one must raise a particular base to achieve a desired result, okay? So in the exponential scientific notation, the base was 10. It's implied to be 10. But we can use other bases as well. So the log is the exponent to which you must raise a particular base to achieve a desired result. So, for example, if we have 2 to the 4 equals 16, we know that's a true statement, right? We can say 4, then, is the exponent to which we must raise the base 2 to achieve the desired result of 16, right? In other words, 2 to what power is 16? The answer is 4. 4, then, would be the log, okay? It's just the exponent. Now, of course, we don't really write logs like that because if we did, we would just call it 2 to the 4th equals 16. But we can write it equivalently like this, okay? That same sentence, right? You know, in English, you have sentence structure. You had ad adverbs or adverbial clauses, which can kind of get moved around. Uh, in the sentence, right? Like, when I was a child, I did childish things, right? You can flip that around and say, I did childish things when I was a child. And someone will be like, no way, right? So you can adjust the sentence structure without losing uh, the message. Same thing here. This is a mathematical sentence. The equal sign is is. So 2 to the 4th is 16. You can shuffle that around and say the exact same thing by saying log, how do you think we read that? Base 2, right? Log base 2 of 16, log base 2 of 16 is 4. It says the exact same thing. So log base 2 of 16 is 4, says the same thing as 2 to the 4th equals 16. Now, which one are you more comfortable with? Probably 2 to the 4th equals 16th, right? But you're going to get more and more comfortable with logs, okay? So in this case, notice 16 is not a really, really huge number. It's manageable, right? But we can write 16 as a power of 2, and then we can refer to it once we all uh, establish 2 as the base. We can start referring to 16 as 4, okay? Because 4 is the exponent in base 2 to which you must raise it to get 16. And 4 is a much smaller number. So that's kind of what logs do. 
They make really big numbers smaller, like what we did in the warm-up, or they make really small, like microscopic numbers, 0. 0.00000, like Avogadro's number, or I guess that would be a big number too. Um, they make them manageable, okay? They bring them up to size by referring to their uh, relative size, their exponent, okay? So because these two sentences are the same, there's going to be a way to go back and forth between the two, and we'll talk about that in just a second. All right, so here's another thing that you want to think of when you think of logs, other than just exponents. They always come on the heels of learning about exponential functions, which makes sense because a log is an exponent, right? But you can think of a log as an operation now that undoes the work of an exponent, right? So, like, what undoes the work of multiplication? Division, right? They're inverse operations. What undoes the work of subtraction? Addition. Very good. What undoes the work of exponentiation? Logarithms, right? Bless you. Yeah, you could take square roots as well. But the, the inverse of exponentiating something is logging it, okay? So logs undo the work of exponentials. So in that sense, a log function and an exponential function are inverses of each other. So that means then for every exponential function of the form b to the x, remember b was called the what? The base, and it was either between 0 and 1, in which it was decay, or greater than 1, in which case it was growth. Um, there exists, because it's one-to-one, -one, there exists an inverse function. We call that f to the negative first, f inverse. There is an inverse function that is the log function that is of the form log base b of x. Okay? Now, notice this b right here, we read that as log base b. And on the exponential function, we read that as b to the x, but we call b the what? The base. So that's the same b in both of them, and in both cases, we call it the base, log base b, base b to the x power. Now, just like with exponentials, if the base of the log is between 0 and 1, it's going to be a decay or a decreasing function. It's just going to be log decay, and if b is greater than 1, just like exponentials, it's going to be logarithmic growth, okay? So here is maybe something you've seen before. I'm kind of teaching this like maybe you didn't get in algebra 2. Um, but maybe you touched on it briefly. This is what I call, for lack of a better term, the conversion formula. It's a theorem that allows you to go back and forth between the two forms, okay? So log base b of x equals y if and only if, okay? That double-headed arrow means if and only if. One side implies the other and vice versa. Sometimes we write that as IFF, if you've ever seen that. That's not just if. <laughs> That means if and only if, okay? So log base b of x equals y if and only if b to the y's power equals x. Okay, the if and only if means we can start on the right side too. b to the y equals x if and only if log base b of x equals y. So if you have one, you have the other. You have the other, you have the one, okay? And you should be able to go back and forth between them. Now here's one way maybe uh, you all learned it if you all saw this before. Have you all seen this before? In algebra 2? Yes? Okay, good. Uh, maybe you all learned to convert it by going around the world, right? So you take the b here, b to the y's power equals x. That's called, uh, I don't know, the around the world method. b to the y's power equals x. Take a trip around the world. But does it work going the other way? Kind of. b to the x equals y, that's not quite the same. But log base b of x equals y. You can go around the world and convert back from one to the other. If you're, if you're comfortable with that, that's fine. I don't want you to kind of think about it that way. I want you to understand what logs is. What is a log? Yeah, the log is the exponent, okay? So in math, what do we replace the word is with? The log equals the exponent. Okay, so notice on the right-hand side, what is the exponent on the base b? It's y, isn't it? On the right-hand side, the exponent is y. If you read that on the left, notice the log is equals y. The log is the exponent. The log is y. Y is the exponent. The log is the exponent. And then what is b? 
See, is the base, right? It's the base of the exponent. So remember, a log is an exponent to which you must raise the given base B to achieve the desired result. The desired result is called X, right? And it has a name also. In this format, X is called the argument. The thing that you take the log of is called the argument. It's what you're trying to achieve, all right? So if you just think about it that way and know what the components are, you should be able to go back and forth very quickly. Now, there's another way to think about it, okay? Because logs and exponentials are related how? How do we say? They're inverses of each other, okay? Um, if you had 5 times x equals 25, how would you solve for x? You would divide both sides by 5. And why does that work? Because what's the inverse of multiplying by 5? Dividing by 5, okay? You could do the same thing with logs. If you have log base b of x equals y, what would be the inverse of logging something base b? Exponentiating is what we call it. Exponentiating base b. So here's what that would look like. We have b to the, now, log base b of x equals b to the y. That's how it would look. The two sides now become exponents, and we write the base on the bottom left. That's how you take or exponentiate both sides. Well, what do you think b to the log base b of x is? We start with x, we log it base b, and then we exponentiate it base b. What happens when you compose two inverse functions back to back? What do they do to each other? They, they undo each other. They cancel each other's operations out. So b to the log base b of x is just x, right? It's the same thing as like multiplying by 5 and dividing by 5. We start with x. We log it base b, which takes us over here, and then we exponentiate it base b. We're right back where we started with x, right? Remember that? f of g of x equals x, which equals g of f of x when f and g are inverses, right? And notice what we have on the right-hand side is b to the y. Is that the same thing we have over here? It is, right? So instead of doing the around the world thing, you can just solve for x by logging or, or exponentiating both sides. Here's the other way to think about it. Let's say we start with b to the y equals x. What would then be the inverse of exponentiating base b? Over here, we logged it base b first, so we exponentiated both sides. What would be the inverse of ex, uh, exponentiating? Logging, yeah. Now, I can't squeeze it in there, so I'm going to have to do it on a separate line. Log base b of y equals log base b of x. What did I do? I took the log, oops, I took the log base b of both sides. Log base b, log base b. And as long as I do it to both sides, I'm good. Well, guess what happens on the left? Guess what log base b of b to the y is? If logs and exponentials are inverses, yeah, they cancel each other's operations out. They're inverses of each other. Okay, So that's composing them back to back. In this case, we're starting with y. Now we're exponentiating at base b. It takes us over here. And then we're logging at base b. We're right back where we started with y. And then on the right side, we have log base b of x, which is the same thing we have over here. So that's fine if you remember the around the world to go back and forth between the two. But because they're inverses of each other, we can actually exponentiate both sides to get rid of a log, or we can log both sides to get rid of an exponentiation. Okay? They're inverses of each other. Okay, sweet. Uh, what do we call the thing we're taking the log of? Just the term? The argument. All right? Cool. All right, example one. It says to solve for x, it needs to the following. Well, notice this one is kind of already solved for x, right? It says x equals log base 3 of 27. Okay, so log base 3 of 27 is, in fact, a number. But I want to simplify it. That might be a better instruction, simplify it, okay? So what does this x represent in this problem? It is the what? It's, it's the log, right? It's the log because, remember, the log is 
the exponent, yes? The log is the exponent. So the log equals x. x is the log. So here's how you can read this. The base is 3, right? So the log is x. It's the exponent then to which we must raise the base 3 to achieve the argument, the desired result of 27. In other words, 3, the base, to what power is 27? 3 to what power is 27? 3. Okay. It's all right. No, you just, you just a little, all right, on a Monday, just a little ambitious. Just a little quick out of the gate, right? <clears throat> so X is 3. So what is log base 3 of 27? It's equivalent to 3, right? If your jersey number was 3, you could replace it on the back of your jersey with log base 3 of 27, and everyone's going to know it's the same number, right? Okay, cool. So 3 to what power is 27? That answer is 3. So that's one way to do it, okay? And that's thinking about it in your head. The other way to do it is to convert it, right? Go around the world. If you go around the world, you get 3 to the x equals 27. And because exponentials are 1 to 1, this might be a little bit easier for you to think about in terms of solving, right? Because now you're telling yourself, self, 3 to what power is 27? And, of course, the answer is 3, right? You can, rat, you can think about it like that. So that's another way to do it. Is there another way to do it? Heck, yeah. Let's keep going. How do I undo logging base 3? I can exponentiate base 3. And so that looks like that. We kind of write the 3 on the bottom left of each of those so that those two things on each side become exponents. And now, what is 3 to the log base 3 of 27? It's 27, right? They undo each other. And now we're left with 3 to the x. And now, of course, you're like, ah, oh, 3 to what power is 27? And you get x equals 3. Okay? That's another way to do it. That's how you get into exponential. And the last way to do it is this. Okay? If x is the exponent to which you must raise the base 3 to get the argument 27, you could write it like this. You can take your argument, 27, and see if you can't write it as a power of 3. Did you write 27 as a power of 3? Yeah, it's 3 cubed. Okay? And now, the answer should be whatever that exponent is, right? Because you're thinking of it now like I'm starting with a 3, and I'm exponentiating at base 3, and then I'm turning around and logging at base 3. And those are going to undo each other, and I get x equals 3. In other words, 3 to what power? is equal to 3 to the third. <laughs> 3 to what power equals 3 to the third? The answer is 3. So lots of different ways to think about it. All right. So with that, give this one a shot. X is equal to log base 4 of 1 over 64. But what is log base 4 of 1 over 64 equal to? It's equal to something else. It's, it simplifies down to a relatively nice number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it's the ruler now, the chalk trick. Yeah, there you go. You're going to exponentiate it. Make sure that that number is written right there in front. So that it, it, when you read that, it's 4 to the log rate. This whole thing becomes exponential. Okay. If you were to exponentiate both sides of base 4, that would be the same thing as what the around the world trick does, the conversion. It converts it to exponential. So I'll go ahead and do that. 4 to the x equals 4 to the log base 4. And now you get 4 to the x equals, and I like that because it reinforces that logging something base 4 and exponentiating something base 4 undo each other's work, and you're left with 1 over 64. Okay, 
So that, that's one way to get there. You could have also done the around the world thing, or you could have just thought about the definition of the log. The log is X. The base is 4. So 4 to what power of X is the argument 164? Is it 3? Very good. Um, once you get it like this, there's a method that I call the GTBTS method. Okay? Because exponentials are one-to-one -one and logs are one-to-one, -one, if you could GTBTS, which means what? Get the boys to sack the quarterback. Get the, <laughs> that was good, that was a good guess. Get the bases the same. If you can get your bases the same, then you can equate the exponents, right? So can I write 1 over 64 as a power of 4? Well, the answer is maybe. Uh, 64 is 4 cubed, right? So now if I bring that to the top, I get 4 to the negative third. And now that I got the bases the same, 4 to the blob equals 4 to the blob, because exponentials are 1 to 1, which, remember, means they pass both the vertical and the horizontal line test. I think uh, Mr. Johnson taught you all that lesson. What's the consequence of that then? So x must equal negative 3. So if you have a log equation and you want to convert it to exponential, that's perfectly fine, right? Because you have more experience dealing with exponential than you do with logs. It's the exact same equation, the exact same sentence. The sentence structure is just slightly different. You actually don't have the LOG visible, okay? So GTBTS, get the bases the same, and it'll work, all right? Sweet. Um, go ahead then and try part C. It's already solved for X. Essentially, we just want to simplify log base 2 of the square root of 32. The log is the exponent to which you must raise the base, which in this case is 2, to get your re desired result, which is the argument, the square root of 32. So 2 to what power of x is the square root of 32? That right there, when you say it like that, 2 to what power of x is the square root of 32 is another way to convert it to exponential. It's the same thing as doing the around the world thing. It's the same thing as exponentiating both sides base 2. That's just you talking yourself through it in terms of what a log is. The log is the exponent x to which you must raise the base 2 to get your desired argument result of square root of 32. So now it's the same question. Can you write the square root of 32 as a power of 2? Yeah. If it's a problem like this where I'm giving it to you without a calculator, it should work out for you. You should be able to find it. So first of all, let's write 32 as a rational number or with a rational exponent, I should say. Okay, now what does the right side become? Does it become 16? Do I just take half of 32? No. But 32 has shown up enough for us to know that it is a power of 2. It's 2 to the what? Fifth, right. And if you're not sure, you could just do trial and error, right? 2 to the first is 2, 2 to the squared is 4, 2 to the third is 8, 2 to the fourth is 16, then we get 32, 64, 128, 256, blah, 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 you keep doubling them. All right, so now we're kind of back in our happy place, right? Using rules of exponents, when you raise a power to a power, that's exponentiation. It comes down one rung and becomes what? What do we do with the exponents? We add those? No, we multiply. Good. When we are exponentiating, it comes down to multiplication. So did we GTBTS on this one? Did we get the bases the same? Yeah. Okay, basically it means B to the X equals B to the Y. So X must equal Y. That's what that means when we get the bases the same. So X must equal what? Five halves. Or 
Okay? And what that means then is that 2 to the 2.5th power is equal to the square root of 32. Okay? Now let's, let's verify. I want to verify in the calculator. If you don't have one in front of you, that's fine. Let's just verify. Uh, we'll type it in. Uh, the base was 2. If I raise it to the 5 halves power, like that, I should get that number. Well, what's the square root of 32? It should be the same number. And it is. Sweet. Now, is there a way to type log base 2 of square root of 32 directly into the calculator? Maybe. If you look at your calculator, if you, if you have looked at it, uh, again, there's no reason to grab one right now. But notice on the left-hand side, your calculator has really two log buttons that are pre-programmed. You got this one here, which is L-O-G, and the one right below there is L-N. What do you think the base is on this L-O-G? Ten. Ten, good. We call that the common base. That's the scientific base. That's what we did in the warm-up, base 10 with the scientific notation. What is the second command on your calculator? If you hit second LOG, what is it? 10 to the X. Yeah. Why do you think those two are on the same key? Well, they're not the same thing, but they are closely related. They are what of each other? Inverses. They're good. Good. This one down here is also pre-programmed on your calculator. It's LN which is the natural log. It's backwards. It's logarithmic naturalis. Okay? It's the natural log. Guess what base we use on the natural log? E, right? The natural base E, which is 2.718. Yes, Darrell, what is the second command feature on the LN? It's E to the X. Why do you think E to the X and LN are on the same key? They're inverses of each other. Does your calculator have a log base 2 key anywhere? No, it doesn't. Your calculator is only programmed in log base 10 and log base E. So if you want to evaluate something that is not log base 10 or log base E, you're going to need something different, a different tool. Okay? And we'll get to that very, very shortly. All right. Fact. To summarize, fact. Since f of x equals b to the x and g of x equals log base b of x, those are what's of each other? Those are inverses of each other. They're both one to one. Then if b to the x equals b to the y, x equals y. What method do I call that? GTBTS, right. That's not, you won't find that in any textbook, but it's kind of fun to say, right? GTBTS? Oh, what kind of car do you have? Oh, I have this GTBTS model. Oh, really? Okay. Sweet. Um, GTBTS. Get the bases the same. It also works for logs, though, as you'll see when we start solving uh, more complicated log equations. If log base b of x equals log base b of y, we got the bases the same, right? They're both b late base b. What can we say about x and y? They're also equal to each other. Then x equals y as well. We got the bases the same. And you could prove that real quickly. If you wanted to unlog both sides, all you have to do is exponentiate base sides, base b. What is b to the log base b of x? Yes, it's equal to x because logging base b and exponentiating base b are inverses of each other. Okay? Uh, what if we did this over here? What if I logged both sides? Log base b of b to the x. Guess what that's equal to? x. Because, again, logs and exponentials are inverses of each other. So notice I can actually combine those two together, and I can get this property, okay? B to the log base B of X is equal to X, which is equal to log base B of B to the X. That's basically the same thing as saying F of G of X equals X, which equals G of F of X, Okay? So that's a nice property of logs that works because they're inverses of each other. Okay? Well, that's, that's that first fact. They're one-to-one. -one. Here's an additional fact. Ready? The previous fact that I gave you was in a box. 
while this one is not. Fact. That's a fact. Okay. So as I already said, there are two special log bases that we are going to be working with this year, mainly one over the other, but they're both pre-programmed on your calculator Medora. Base 10 for your science classes and base E for all your other classes, like math, history, home ec, PE. Yeah, they all use base E. Yeah. Um, base E is called the natural base, okay? It's, it's uh, lower in polysaturated fats. It's healthier for you. It's organic. It's all natural, okay? Base 10 is called the common base or the scientific base. Okay, so the log with base 10 is called the common logarithm because it has the common base, and it is customary to write it without showing the subscript that is the base, all right? So if you ever see L-O-G of X, and again, that's how we read it, log of X, without the base, it's implied that the base is what? 10, okay? So if you looked on your calculator, you'll see it just says L-O-G. There's no base. So if you ever see log and there's no base written, it's base 10, which means if you want it to be a different base, you need to show it, okay? The other log with base E is called the natural log because it uses the natural base. And it's denoted by LN, all right? So we can't just drop the base E. But if you ever see LN of X, that is the same as log base E of X. All right, we call it the natural log, but we write it LN instead of NL. Why? It's from the Latin logarithmus naturalis. Boy, that's such a pretty language, right? Logarithmus naturalis. LN, it's the natural log. Every other log is going to have its base written, okay? So here are some properties of common logs. What's common base? Ten. So what is log of one? It says it's zero. Log base ten of one is zero. If you want to write it in there, that's fine. Log of one is zero. Why is that? What's another way to say it? log base ten of one is zero? Because ten to the zero power is one. Good. We can write that off to the side. That's because, or if and only if, 10 to the 0 power equals 1. Oh, okay. That makes sense then. So guess what the x-intercept is on the graph of log base 10? Guess what the x-intercept is? If I plugged in an x equals 1 and I get out of y equals 0, that's going to be the x-intercept, 1, 0. Okay? What is log of 10? It's 1. Okay, again, if you want to put the base there, why does that work? Because 10 to the 1th power is 10. Okay, what do you think log of 100 is going to be? Well, what's another way to write log of 100? That's the same as log of 10 squared, right? Guess what log base 10 of 10 squared is? Two? How about this one? What's log of a thousand? Well, that's ten to the third, right? So it should be three. What's log of ten thousand? Four. Notice if you just have powers of ten, the log base ten is just the number of zeros it has, right? Okay, now why does that work? Because ten thousand is ten to the fourth. So just like we saw in the warm-up, you can see your number's getting really big really fast, right? 10,000. Well, if we all agree on base 10, we can start referring to it as the much smaller number, 4, right? And again, if we know it's 4 in base 10, we know that's the same as 10,000. What would, uh, how about one more? What would log of 100,000 be? It would be 5, right? Because 100,000 is 10 to the 5th. So in general, in general, what is log of 10 to the x? Why does this work? Because 10,000, what would be log of a million? Let's do one more. Yeah, log of a million would be 6 because log of a million is the same as log base 10 of 10 to the 6. And so that's 6. So let's do this one here. In general, what is log base 10 of 10 to the x? It's just X, 
right? So base 10 is pretty easy. If it's a power of 10, you just count up how many zeros it has. All right, so 10 to the x and log base 10 to the x are inverses of each other. So that's another way to think about that, right? We've already said that. Start with x, exponentiate at base 10, then turn around and log at base 10. You're going to end up right back where you started with x. And then the next line is doing it in reverse, right? If you start with x and you log at base 10, turn around and exponentiate at base 10, you're going to get right back where you started, which is x. So those are powers of 10. Here's the properties of the natural log. Guess what the natural log of 1 is? 0, okay? Now, you could put a base e there if you want. Why does that work? Convert it. What is e to the 0th power? 1. So guess what the x-intercept is on the graph of the natural log of x? It's 1, yeah. What's the natural log of e? It's 1, right? Because that's e to the first. It's 1. What do you think the natural log of e squared is? Not e to the second, just 2, right? What is the natural log of e to the fifth, do you think? 5. How about the natural log of e to the hundred? 100, right? E to the hundred is a huge number. But if we agree on base e, it's just 100, a much smaller number. So in general, what is the natural log of e to the x? x, okay? Again, we're starting with x, we're exponentiating base e, and then we're logging base e, we're right back where we started, and then we can do it the other way around. Start with x, natural log it, and then turn around and exponentiate at base e, we get right back where we started. So here it is in general, for any base, not just base 10 or e. What's log base b of 1? 0, okay, and it's because b to the 0 equals 1. Guess what the x-intercept is for any log function base b? 1, yeah. What is log base b of b to the first for any base b? 1. What would log base b of b squared be for any base? 2. How about log base b of b to the fifth for any base? 5, so on and so forth. So that's what this one says. What's log base b of b to the x for any base? It's just x. So again, you can think about it as starting with x, exponentiating base b, and then turning around and logging at base b. And then the other one is comp composing it the other way. Start with x, log at base b, then exponentiate at base b, and you turn around and you get with x. So we've already summarized this once. Let's do it one more time. I like to do it with a single line. Log base b of b to the x equals x which equals b to the log base b of x. And it's because f of g of x equals x, which equals g of f of x. How are log base b and exponentiation base b related? One more time. They're what? Inverses. So when you compose them, they undo each other. Okay, we're going to stop right there. No quiz tomorrow. We'll quiz on Wednesday, but there's a worksheet that awaits. Enjoy the rest of your World Pneumonia Day. Celebrate by not getting...